Before we start, I'm going to let TJ shout out her mom. Oh, mom? Yes, ma'am. Hey, girl. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Omalala Snusi. I'm a junior, and I'm the creative director of Amanla. My name is TJ Ewell. I am a senior, and I am the secretary of Amanla. Thank you all so much for joining us for our third annual musical show, and we are so excited to bring you all Somogo stories. And this year we're doing something a little different. We are deciding, we decided to celebrate storytelling across the continent. So we're bringing you songs and stories performed by African students at Duke. Right, and we're really excited. We've been working really hard on this and we just really wanted to share different stories from the continent and mix it in with the different lineages and heritage that the stories have. And we're so excited to see all of you guys here. So I really hope you all enjoy it and feel free to take photos and post on social media because we love that stuff. <laughs> like she said, please feel free to take pictures, dance, sing along if you know the songs. We really are excited to bring the show to you tonight um, and we hope you enjoy. One note, Amanla is a Hosa word that means power and it was used in South Africa to empower people during the apartheid. It's usually responded with a way to, which means to the people. So, Amanla, a way to. Hey. Well done. Hey. Good job. <laughs> All right, enjoy the show. Anansi of Ghana, how the spider obtained the sky god Nyame's stories. Anansi the Spider stories are some of the most well-known stories from the Republic of Ghana. The nation of Ghana's history dates back to the 11th century, but truly found eminence between 1670 to 1957 as Asantamen, the Kingdom of Ashanti. The Ashanti Kingdom is well known for its enormous wealth, extensive military force, architecture, culture, and for originating the legendary stories of Anansi, the trickster who brought us our stories. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dorothy Oyedra Monko, and I'm from Ghana. There were once no stories in the world, no way to share one's mind with another, as all the stories in the world belong to the sky god Nyame. Anansi the spider, who was a great trickster, went to Nyame to buy his stories, but Nyame refused. Unconvinced that Anansi could pay for the stories, he'd warned him that many great kingdoms, like Kokofu, Bakwai, had tried, but had failed. How then could an insignificant spider like Anansi succeed? Nyame devised four difficult, nearly impossible tasks for Anansi. He would have to capture four of the most dangerous creatures in the world. Undeterred, Anansi set out on his adventure, scheming all the way along. He said to Nyame, I will bring all of these. Ko, go and bring them, said the sky god. First, Anansi set out to capture Onini the python. Having consulted with his wife, Asu did as she, Anansi did as she instructed. He tricked Onini to wrap his body around a branch. As soon as he did, Anansi tied him and carried him to Nyame. He triumphantly presented his first accomplishment. Then Anansi went to catch Osibo the leopard. This time, Asu and Anansi devised to dig a large hole near where Osibo lives. Osibo fell into the hole. Anansi pretended to free Osibo with his webs. Trapped in them, Osibo couldn't escape. Swiftly, Anansi took him to Nyame. Nyame doubted that Anansi would finish the final challenges, the third challenge, catching the immobile hornets. Asu advised him to pour water where the hornets lived. Thinking, and the hornets were tricked into thinking it was raining. Anansi did, and they fled. Swiftly, he captured them in his calabash and swept the hornets to Nyame. For his fourth and final challenge, Anansi sought out to capture Motir, the ill-tempered fairy. He carved a door from sticky wood, placed a doll and some pounded yam near the fairy's home. Motir ate the food and tried to thank the doll. No response. She grew frustrated. No response. Then she smacked the doll. Immediately, the cunning Anansi snatched Motir, who was now stuck to the door, and brought her to Nyame. Stunned that Anansi had completed the task, Nyame said, Kweku Anansi, from today and going on forever, I present my sky god stories to you. Inshira, Inshira, my blessing, my blessing. No more shall we call them the sky god stories, but we shall call them Anansi stories. Anansi snatched the stories greedily from Nyame with the full intent of keeping the stories to himself. 
as he tried to carry all the stories to his home and as he slipped from the sky and watched in horror as all the stories stumbled down and dispersed throughout the earth. My stories, Nyame cried in horror. Nyame shook his head and chuckled at the trickster. Now they are the world's stories. And thus, the stories were brought to the earth. And thus, we begin again to share them with you all. Welcome, everyone.
Malisadio. Malisadio is a classical Madinka legend told in varying interpretations across generations of Malians. The meaning of the story consistently changes from a warning of how the selfish actions of one individual can harm others to the late 20th and 21st century interpretation representing the struggle for independence and constructing national identity within Mali. It is often now used to inspire citizens to find inspiration in Mali's glorious past in order to persevere through the challenges of today. Hi everyone, my name is Amalala Snusi and I'll be reading the tale of Mali Sadia. Long ago, during the time when time was young, there was a village which sat between two rivers, the Bathin and the Bakoi. Bafulabe, as the village was known, was home to many villagers who wished to draw water and bathe in the nearby river. But the river was ravenous, and many of the villagers feared the crocodiles and violent animals that would appear. Their fear persisted until one day, a pregnant woman went to the river to draw water, and the hippopotamus appeared in the water near her. At first, the woman was frightened by the hippo, but the hippopotamus spoke to her softly, offering her and the villagers protection to pass by the water as they wish. The villagers were grateful for the Mali, the Bakan Makan word for a hippo. Eventually, the pregnant woman gave birth and named her Sadio, which means pure. Sadio grew up playing by the river and eventually became close to Mali. One day, another hippopotamus appeared, but with a much crueler temperament than Mali. He hurt and killed some villagers. They schemed to have the village hunters kill him. The hunters, in some legends, have suggested that he was under the influence of a jealous individual who lusted after the beautiful Sadio, killed Mali instead. Upon hearing the terrible news, Sadio joined Mali. To this day stands a statue in Bafulabe in honor of Mali Sadio, reminding everyone of what Mali once stood for. Maliba, don't 
vinorata se kuchenge tarufu muma oko. Vaza baba tapa muviri pasina rara mo. Na we na wo tachiwana. Vaza patumbu kapa muvi pasina rara mo. Na we na wo tachiwana. Hey, todi iko kuteni. Watch how we do. Sinali. Ayenzi njani. What shall we do? Oh, Todi Iko Kuteni What shall we do? Sinali Ayen Sinja What shall we do? Hey, Todi Sinteni What shall we do? Sinali Ayen Sinja What shall we do? Seri kwe kuma kuna mute oro mambo Ta bere roa Ta chiwana Go in the five months I know Tachiwana, very good. Kuna muteuro mambo taberewa. Tachiwana, by masano. Now we know. Oh, Tachiwana, very good. Kuna muteuro mambo taberewa. Tachiwana, by masano. Now we know. Tachiwana, very good. Kuna muteuro mambo taberewa. Tachiwana, by masano. Now we know. What shall we do? Sinali. Ayen Sinjani. What shall we do? Yei, Todi. Sinali. What shall we do? Sinali. Ayen Sinjani. What shall we do? Oh, Todi. Sinali. What shall we do? Sinali. Sinjani.